Welcome guys to this episode of Attack the Track. Today we're going to attack the Spa Franco Shaw circuit which has recently been released by Studio 397 for R Factor 2. This 20 turn track in the middle of Belgium features 11 left hand turns and 9 right hand turns. It got up to 3 heavy braking zones and it features high speed track passages as much as high speed turns as well. Therefore, this track is very special for car setup because if you look at it, there is um, a possibility for two very different setup philosophies. Either you choose low downforce and high speed setup, which will be beneficial in sector one and three and even more beneficial for overtaking. But you could also choose a high downforce and a kind of low speed setup, which will be highly beneficial in sector two. Anyway, this track requires a nice float flowing rhythm when doing driving in order to be quick and now we're gonna have a look in a Formula 1 car how one lap around the Spa Franco Shaw circuit looks like. Just like on any other circuit you need to maximize the way to the lap so you go wide into turn 20 in order to get the best possible exit going across the line and on a flying lap here around Spa. Turn 1 heavy braking zone late apex and then after the apex attack the throttle as hard as possible because you need to carry all the exit performance down the straight going towards the rouge turn three four five everything flat out in a high downforce car it may look other or may look different than other cars anyway coming towards turn seven the com that's going to be the best overtaking spot hard braking zone and it's a single weight combination so you need to stay tight in seven tight in eight and then focus on the apex here, turn nine, to carry the maximum speed with a short sprint up to Rivage. Turn 10, going down the inside, stay tight on the curb, don't go too wide on the exit because next up straight is no name corner, turn 11, wanna carry all the speed onto the exit, onto the downhill towards Pujon, a high speed corner, maximize the track, maximize the speed, you carry through the corner, that's all what it is about here in Pujon up to 13 and 14 stay tight on the inside of 13 to optimize the way into 14 attack the exit hard for turn 15 again the exit is super important here as you're going to sector 3 you want to carry all the speed up towards Blanchim or the back straight this is where you can position yourself make be making an attack into turn 19 everything flat out here Blanchim no issue whatsoever everything flat out and coming towards bus stop heavy braking zone number three make sure you stay tight here in turn 19 on the inside and then have a good entry into 20 once again focus on the exit and that is one lap around the spa front of short circuit and now we're going to look at each corner that is a key area here around the spa circuit and of course, we're starting with turn one here at Spa Franco Shaw. As already explained a little bit, you need to have a late apex for exit speed because exit speed is going to be vital up the hill in the first sector because this is the point where you set up the car for either attacking or defending an opponent on the track. And we're going to have a look at this in a more slow-mo view right now because... Um, when coming towards this turn one apex, there is a little special thing about the apex curve because the corner is a little bit banking towards the inside, but on the curb there is an area where there is an opposite banking which would throw you off the track. And we're going to have a more closer look into that. It is the blue area. You will see that this is a different kind of banking. And I've over exaggerated this here a little bit in a drawing. The left hand side of the red area is the track and the right hand side is the banking. So where the green arrow was, that is where you want to have the inside wheel. And uh, that is the perfect line around turn one. You see the car gets dragged around the corner just a little bit and that is uh, assisting the rotation. And then you can go early on the power down towards a rouge uh, out of the first turn. And uh, we're gonna look at this late apex um, technique a little bit more closely. And we're looking at this from a GT3 side of uh, view. So you see I'm kinda going a little bit wide 
uh, into the apex of turn one. We're going to carry the red line because the red line is the fast line. Um, if you would just look at the corner, the yellow line would be right, but we're looking at the exit speed, so we need to take the red line. As you can see, we're late on the apex, so despite we have passed the apex already, our car is pointing more towards the exit of the corner, which allows us to apply the throttle a lot more early and right there where the green arrow is, compared when you take the um, corner irregularity line, you may even have to lift where the yellow um, arrow is, or you can just where the yellow arrow was um, smash down the throttle. And then you see also on the exit, there is a shorter way um, on the inside with a red line following. So that is the perfect line going through turn one. Carrying all the speed down towards turn two, three, four, five, which is Orouge and Radillon. It is easy for high downforce cars, which is why we don't like look at the footage right here from the Formula One car again. But in general, the driving line is very important through Orouge to nail it, to hit the hidden eight packs at Radillon on the top of the hill. Um, but be careful because in slipstream this turn is extremely dangerous, it's easy to lose the rear and especially when you come out of the compression going up the hill the elevation changes come into play because then the rear end gets loose and uh, you may lose a lot of rear end stability regardless of whether you're running into slipstream or dirty air or whether you run in clean air. Anyway that exit of Radillon is very important because next up you find turn 7, 8 and 9 after the Camel Straight. So obviously Camel Straight is all slipstreaming and then heartbreaking zone into turn 7, 8, 9 which is a good overtaking spot. Um, the car has a high demand of weight transfer when going through 7 and 8. You need to be precise, the car needs to do exactly what you do on the steering wheel and to me this is a single weight combination because you have to stay tight in seven, you have to nail the entry and also stay tight in eight, not go too wide because it's turn nine you really want to focus on and that's why you need to be patient in turn seven and eight um, with uh, not trying to accelerate too early and too hard and uh, we're going to have a look into this uh, turn seven, eight, nine right here as well approaching into turn seven you may want to use the entry curb and maximize your way into turn seven really nail that inside curb on turn seven and stay tight there because you want to have the best possible entry into turn eight make sure to slightly cut the inside because as you can see the curb has a little bit of a profile you can hang in the inside wheel on the inside part of the curb and get the car turned around nicely. Make sure to not go over the kind of middle um, on the exit when coming out of eight because you need to straight set a direction change again and nail this apex for turn nine. As much as the car allows, it is a quite steep curb. So some cars may not be able to run the apex curb and some cars may do it. So if you can do it, nail that apex curb to maximize the track size available and then run all over the curb here at the exit of turn 9. Next up we find turn 10 which is Rivage and it's going to be a downhill braking zone. You need to stay tight on the apex and stay late on the apex or tight on the curb and you shall not go wide on the exit. I have highlighted the apex here with a green um, arrow and as I said don't go too wide on the exit because first the exit is off camber so the car tends to understeer and secondary um, the exit of turn 10 defines your setup and your entry into turn 11 which we're going to have a closer look again from the onboard in the F1 car. So we're coming down here at Rivage and I told you you need to stay tight and especially here where the AstroTurf is on the right hand side that is where the apex is. Here you should poke up the throttle once again and uh, also now you go into the off camber area so the car tends to understeer once you come downhill out of turn 10 as I said don't go too wide on the exit here at turn 10 I'm already too wide a little bit here and then you want to set up for turn 11 but from my point of view do not touch the curb here on the right hand side because as you can see the curb is very very steep and it may just 
unsettle the car going into turn 11. Turn 11, no name corner, just basically nail the apex and try to take as much speed as possible out of the turn and onto the short sprint towards um, Kuhol, which will be turn 12 and uh, the corner we look at next. Puhon definitely is, beside Eau Rouge, the most exciting corner here on the Spa circuit. So it's a high-speed corner. The driving line is very car-dependent. So in the high downforce car, you basically just throw it up the inside of the apex, turn 12, and just carry all the speed out of the corner as fast as possible, as much uh, speed carried as possible through turn 12. This may look different in GT3 or lower downforce cars. And then you have a short sprint up towards turn 13, 14. Once again, you need to favor the exit of 14. Therefore, you have a very late apex and need to stay pretty tight in uh, turn 13, coming towards turn 14. And in this particular chicane, you should use as much curb as possible because it enables you to maximize the track width and therefore um, run higher cornering speeds. After turn 14, you're coming up to turn 15. And this is another key location because the exit speed out of turn 15 is vital. Once again, you need to make sure to use the maximum of the curbs on the exit. And um, you have a, a short sprint up to turn 16, but you rather lift prior to turn 16 in a car that cannot take turn 16 flat out instead of uh, lifting at the end or even run wide. So you really want to maximize your entry into turn 16 to run through that as fast as possible after having a blistering exit out of 15 and then you want to carry all the speed and momentum and then you may be able to set up for an attack coming into bus stop chicane turn 19. But before that, after passing turn 17, you need to pass turn 18, which is Blanchimont. And Blanchimont is just another extraordinary corner because in most of the cars, it's going to be simply flat out. However, the driving line is very car dependent. It's also dangerous in slipstream and while sitting in dirty air. But, and it is vital for either attacking or defending into turn 19. However, on the exit of Blanchimont and also on the entry, you should take care of the track limits, which we're going to have um, a look for right now. On the entry on the right hand side, the green AstroTurf, there are the very tight track limits and you should not go too much over there. However, there is a different reason why you should not go there. As you can see a little bit on the right hand side, there is another banking. So some cars may grind a little bit and lose just a kph of straight line speed while grinding on the white line. So don't touch the red area and some cars, GT3 cars, may require the full AstroTurf on the right hand side in order to get a clean entry into turn 18 which is Blanchimont. But um, once again, make sure you don't get a track cut for going too wide off the track trying to open and maximize your entry into turn 18. Short afterwards, you then come to the bus stop chicane turn 1920, which is the second good overtaking spot as uh, it is a heavy braking zone. There is an uphill compression into the entry of turn 19 and an off camber exit into turn 19, which means you need to stay very tight here on the turn 19 because the yellow area, the yellow arrows that are there, that is where the off camber exit out of turn 19 is and that may cause some understeer. So once again, if you go into turn, 18, uh, turn 19, you really want to stay tight on that curb because there is a compression zone where it's going up the hill, additional downfalls, the car will grip more and you will get a good momentum up in turn 19. So going up the hill, you don't want to overshoot it because if you come towards that red area, you are in the off camber zone, you first suffer a little bit of understeer and sudden snap oversteer, and uh, that is really, really bad for both lap time, tires and your stability. And after turn 19, you need to straighten up the wheel real quick and immediately turn to the left to nail the apex here in turn 20. Really want to be close to the anti-cut, but not touching it. 
just really close towards it as we are here right there. And then you see the car gets turned around uh, quite quickly. Also, early on the power, maximize your exit, short into the arrest zone here with the car. And uh, that is actually one lap in an F1 car around the Spa circuit. And I'm pretty sure we can take a lot of things from there and now have a look into the GT3 car. So going around the track with the Corvette and uh, see what the difference is. So going across the start finish line to start our flying lap around the Spa circuit. Going into turn one, once again, maximizing the exit speed, even despite the car is a bit twitchy on the exit but we're gonna have a look into it a little bit slow more you see him slightly overshooting the apex slowing down even further but now hitting the throttle hitting the apex and therefore have a better run out of turn one have a better and enhanced exit onto the way down towards Orouge. and surprisingly i can already tell that Orouge is flat out all you need to do is like throw it up the inside, hit that apex curb, and then just let the car run over Radillon. It is much more tricky than in the F1 car, but basically it is possible in clean air to hit a rouge flat out. Anyway, we're now looking into turn seven. We take so much more curb, even more curb here on the inside, and for turn nine, we mount the heavy curb pretty badly. Um, despite the car is a bit twitchy, and you see we're taking a lot more of the inside curb here inside turn eight, actually cutting the corner quite a bit. Um, but not only turn eight, we also um, maximize the curb in turn nine. In turn 10 already, Rivage, as you see, very close to the inside curb. And again, turn 11, we take a lot more of the high mounted curb into no name corner. So unlike the FSR car, not only touching, but really mounting that inside curb, even going over the AstroTurf, trying to maximize the exit speed out of um, no name Corman, uh, that is. Now coming towards Pujon, throwing the car in, kissing the apex curb, kissing the exit curb, and just trying to carry as much speed as we possibly can. Uh, maybe even a bit too quick on the entry, but you've seen it. Despite we come into an oversteer moment right here, as soon as we touch the curb right now, the car gets a little bit out of that, uh, out of that spin, out of that slide, and just given us a perfect exit through Puhon here. Looking into 13 and 14, stay tight on the inside curb on 13 to maximize the entry into 14. <laughs> Better don't run that curb because you've seen what happens to the car. And other than that, you just, like in the FSR car, mount curbs, hit curbs, maximize the track, maximize the track with, you've seen a slight hesitation of throttle there into 16. And this is what I spoke about beforehand in Blanche Chimor. The GT3 just needs that little bit of extra road in order to take Blanche Chimor flat out. But that is really what it is about on that entry site on the entry Astro again a little bit too wide here in 19 and 20 almost getting caught off by the off camber uh, but that is one lap in the GT3 so you see a little bit of difference compared to the FSR car but now we're coming back to the topic from the beginning this track features two very different setup philosophies and we've tested them both so the low downforce high speed setup and the high downforce low top speed setup here you see the MoTeC file of those two setups compared. So looking into sector one, as you can see, the high downforce setup being six tenths off the pace on Camel Straight yet alone. Well, basically from turn one to Camel Straight, it's even eight tenths because you gain something in turn one, but losing it over the entire straight. However, remember and bear in mind this is super, super slow on the straights and therefore you easily going to be overtaken if people are sitting in a draft. I mean, as you can see, 17 kph of speed difference in an F1 car. That is quite huge. Anyway, at the same time, we're looking at Puhon. This is sector two. And as you can see right there, we've not only 
overcome the 6 tenth disadvantage from sector 1. We've even turned that into half a second of uh, advantage compared to the other setup. And even in Puhon, we are taking Puhon 23 kph faster in cornering speeds. So that is quite intense. In general, this sector 2 is over a second, sec maybe a second and a half quicker than the low down for setup. In the end, of course, we're going to lose a little bit more um, time in sector 3, but on one lap, the high down force setup is faster. However, of course, you always need to reconsider what do you want to have in race, what do you need, and what is your position on the grid, maybe if there is no park for main, stuff like that. So there's a lot of things you need to bear in mind when using or checking either setup philosophy. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. That's going to do it for the Attack the Track of Spa Francochon. If you have appreciated the video, I would love and appreciate if you guys put up the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and make this community grow. If you have any questions whatsoever, have you any feedback you want to give, just put it down in the comment area below and I'll check it out. Thank you so much for watching and see you there for the next time.